Okay, well, I'm going to use a Texas Instrument BA2 Plus calculator and show you how to do a few simple present value problems from the very simple lump sum, uh, you know, present value of a lump sum all the way to a series of uneven cash flows. All right, so first thing you do, obviously turn it on upper right. When you first buy one of these, it usually has two decimal places only. If you want more than two decimal places, you can hit this second function right there. And then down here, you hit format where the dot is. And then you could pick something like eight, hit enter. And now you've got eight decimal places. Okay, so <clears throat> let's say that you've got a problem where you wanna just calculate the present value of a lump sum. So what's the present value of a future cash payment of $25,000? And you're gonna receive this $25,000 in four years. And your discount rate is 5%. So what, do you, what are you willing to pay for that today? What's the present value of that? So these white buttons are all your present value functions. So you can hit these in any order. Let's go ahead and start with the future value. We know the future value is 25,000. So punch that in, future value, all right? We know we're gonna receive it in four years. So we're gonna go 4N, all right? And the discount rate is 5%. So you punch, punch in five, you don't punch in 5%, you leave it as an integer. So five IY. Now there are no um, periodic payments, it's just a lump sum. So let's go ahead and put zero payment in there. And then we just go compute present value. 20, and it says minus 20,567. <clears throat> the reason it says minus 20 is because you're gonna pay, it's an outflow of 20,000 and then there's gonna be an inflow of 25,000. So uh, it usually has a different sign or it does have a different sign. But the present value is then 20,000, positive $20,567.56. Okay, now let's do another one. <clears throat> let's, let's, do, let's say you wanna calculate the interest rate instead. So what is the market rate which, uh, which equates an inflow, a future value of $100,000, you're going to receive $100,000 in three years. And to receive that $100,000, you have to pay $90,000 today. So let's start with the present value for $90,000 in here. One, two, three. That's your present value. But we want to change the sign on that because it's going to be an outflow. So plus minus, minus $90,000, present value. All right. Future value is $100,000. Future value. We know the N is three. All right. Um, there's going to be no payments, no coupons. So now we go compute IY, and this will be our annual interest rate. Our annual interest rate is 3.57%. All right. That's the market rate. That's the annualized market rate for this problem. All right. Let's do another problem. All right, this could come in handy if you're going to buy a house. Um, so let's say you you have a you buy a house and it's going to cost you five hundred thousand. You're going to need to borrow thirty five hundred thousand dollars over thirty years to finance the purchase of this house. Now you're going to have to pay the bank back every single month until until they're made whole. So over the next thirty years, you're going to have to make periodic monthly payments to pay off that five hundred thousand dollar loan. All right. And it's fully amortizing means every single month you're paying back both principal and interest. So we all we want to do here is tr figure out what the payment is. What is that monthly payment? So we know the present value. It's going to be five hundred thousand. Let's just put present value. Let's keep it as a positive number this time. Five hundred thousand dollars is present value. The future value is zero. In other words, after 30 years, you will have completely paid off this loan because it's fully amortizing. So zero is the future value. Now, here's the thing. Because you want to figure out the monthly payment, there's actually going to be more than 30 payments. There's 30 years, and every single month you're going to make a payment. So there's really 360 payments. So N is 360, 30 times 12. And also, the monthly interest rate, we, we've written down an annual interest rate of 4%. But really the month, because we're working in months here, the monthly interest rate is simply four 
divided by 12. And that's 0.333. So that's going to be our IY. So now we're just going to compute our payment, CPT payment. Every single month, we're going to have to pay $2,387. All right. That's what our payment's going to be. Now, I started this problem off as a positive present value of 500000 Had I written a negative for that present value of 500000 then the payment would have been a positive number. All right. It's just going to be the opposite sign of whatever I put in there for the, for the present value. <clears throat> All right. Let's look at another problem here. Now let's get to uneven cash flows. And you might see this if you're valuing a company, you know, and you're looking at a discounted cash flow model. So let's, let's look at this. You, you see a company in the first year, it's going to, it's going to throw off $85,000 in cash. The second year, it's going to throw off $95,000 in cash. The third year, it's going to throw off $105,000 in cash. And then there's also going to be a terminal value. You're going to sell this company at the end of three years. And so your total cash flow stream is at the bottom, $85,000, $95,000, and $555,000. All right. For this kind of problem, <clears throat> we're going to use these buttons up here. Okay, the second row up, the NPV and this, this cash flow numbers. Okay. So... The first thing you do is there's no immediate outflow, okay? There's no immediate outflow. So CF0 is going to be zero. So what I do is I start with CF here. And it gives me a number. Now, I've already done a problem in here before, so I need to clear this out, all right? So the way I need to clear it out is I hit this second function here, second, and then I hit clear work down here at the bottom. Now it's wiped out all of my cash flow net present value calculations. So now it says, okay, what is my CF zero? Let's put in zero for that and hit enter. Okay, there's no immediate outflow. C01, that's my cash flow for the first period, the first year. And we see that that's a positive $85,000. I'm going to put that in. I'm going to hit enter. Now I'm going to hit this down arrow here. And it tells me, it gives me a number one. This is the frequency of the payment. So in other words, I'm only getting one payment for the year of $85,000. So it's only one. It comes up with one usually as a default. So I'm good with that. So let's hit the down arrow again. And now it tells me to enter the, the second cash flow, CO2. So let's punch that in, 95000 And hit enter. And the down arrow. And again one period. So we're good. Down arrow again. And now we're going to our final year. 50, 555,000 is our third cash flow, which is both the cash flow plus the terminal value. 555, one, two, three, hit enter. Down arrow. Okay. Let's hit down arrow again. Now it says, I could keep going, but there's no more cash payments. So at this point, what I want to do is I go ahead and I hit NPV, net present value. Now it tells me, okay, you need to enter an interest rate. Okay, so I, if you go back to the problem, I'm assuming a discount rate of 4%. So I'm going to hit 4 here and enter. And then I'm going to hit uh, the, the, the down arrow. And then it says NPV equals 0. It's telling me to you know, go ahead and compute the NPV. So let's compute it. The present value is $662,956.59. $662. And if you look at the problem itself, it makes sense, right? You're, the present value is going to be a number that's greater than the sum of those three numbers at the bottom, but not a lot greater, right? So um, it's not a lot less. It's not, it, the, the present value is going to be a, um, a value that's, excuse me, that's less than the sum of the cash flows at the bottom because we're discounting those back to the present, each one at 4%. Now, I could have discounted each one of those back separately at 4% and then summed up the three, and I should get the same number if I do it correctly. I should get 662000 and change. All right. So that's the net present value of a series of cash flows. So, you know, I would be willing, if I'm using a discount rate of 4%, I'd be willing. Um, to pay $663,000 for this company if my weighted average cost of capital 
was 4%, all right? Let's take a look at another question here. So remember net present value and IRR. So a lot of times you want to just calculate the net present value and you know what the outflow is and then you know what the inflows are and you know what your discount rate is. So the net present value um, is calculated by discounting both outflows and inflows. All right. So you have a CF zero in this case. Also, the IRR at the bottom, the internal rate of return, is simply the interest rate that equates the cash outflows with the cash inflows when we discount it back. So the present value of everything equals zero. It's what is that interest rate? So I've written those two equations down here for you. And let me, let me give you a couple of examples. Let's say instead now, this is the same problem, but we're going to say that there's an immediate need for a cash outflow of 600000 So maybe a company has approached you and said, we are willing to sell you our company for $600,000. And you have analyzed it and you estimate that in year one, you can earn 85000 in year two, 95, in year three, 555000 And then you'll be out of the investment. So the question is, are you willing to do this deal? Are you willing to pay 600000 If we get a positive net present value, the answer is yes. So let's go ahead and do this problem. So let's hit CF. And let's remember, we've already got a problem in here, so let's clear it out. Let's hit second and then clear work. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and hit enter there. So, so let's, let's kind of start over here and hit, hit um, 600,000. But it's an outflow. So let's change the sign of that. Minus 600,000. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the way to start it is first you hit CF. Okay, sorry, six, CF. So we're going to hit 600,000. And then we're going to change the sign of that plus minus down here at the bottom and hit enter. So that's our immediate outflow. Now our first inflow is going to be 85,000. Enter, down arrow. And it's a one. That's perfect. We're only getting one of those per year. Now we're going to get one payment of 95000 in year two. Enter, downer. And there's my one payment, FO2. And then finally, I'm going to make $555,000. Enter, down arrow, FO3. Let's just see. Let's just make sure CO4 is empty. And it is. And that's good. Okay. So I want to calculate the net present value. So let's go ahead to NPV. And again, it's going to ask me for my interest rate. So let's put in four. Enter. Down arrow. Now it says go ahead and hit the compute. It even tells you up top. It prompts you to hit compute. CPT. And now my CPT is 62,000. Positive 662,957 dollars. And all this is is simply the difference between the original six hundred sixty-two thousand nine fifty-seven and the six hundred thousand dollar outflow. Okay, so the net present value is positive. So yes, I am willing to spend six hundred thousand on this project to get a positive net present value project. All right, let's do one last problem: uneven cash flows. This one is just the same problem, but we're going to do calculate the internal rate of return instead. So remember, the internal rate of return is the essentially the interest rate that you're going to earn on this project. So the way to do this is, again, you want to clear everything out. So hit second, see uh, clear work, even though all the numbers are really going to be the same. Let's go ahead and hit CF. Oh, it hasn't been cleared out yet. So once I hit CF, I see there's numbers in there. Let's hit second and clear work. Okay. So 600,000 is going to be the first outflow. Change that sign to minus, enter, down arrow. CO1 is 85,000, enter, down arrow. And it's FO1, that's perfect. Down arrow again. CO2 is 95,000, enter, down arrow. Okay. FO2 is one, perfect. Down arrow again, 555,000. Enter, down arrow. 
FO3 is zero, perfect, hit it, hit it again. There's nothing in CO4, so we're good. Now here, I'm just gonna hit IRR and it should give me an answer. So let's try that. Uh, IRR, Com and it says, okay, are you ready to compute? Go ahead and hit compute, CPT. And now it's thinking. It takes a little minute, uh, a minute to calculate because it's not actually a very easy calculation to, to do. But they give me a calculation of 8.05%. So that is the internal rate of return on this series of cash flows. So, and remember, given that my weighted average cost of capital or my discount rate that I used was only 4%, you can think of that as a hurdle rate. If your IRR is greater than your hurdle rate, then you want to accept the project. And in this case, it's much higher. It's 8% versus my IRR versus my discount rate, which is 4%. And therefore, I accept this project. All right. So that is a, a short tutorial on how to use a BA2 plus. And my one recommendation is, is if you're ever going to use this on an exam, um, you should practice a handful of problems like this so that when it comes time to, uh, under time pressure, you're able to accomplish these tax, tasks very quickly. All right. Thank you.